Hello everybody and welcome back to Lost Odyssey. It is Chocolate Milk here and as Kaim and Sarah, we're off to find Cook and Mac because they hijacked a train to go and see if they can talk to Lyra. So that is annoying. I'm so sick of these kids doing stuff they're not supposed to be doing. They're just making our life more difficult and taking us on more detours that we shouldn't be taking. So anyways, We're gonna hijack our own train, so we're making a good mark in Gosa. We're gonna be welcome back to this city at any time. I just know it. It's him, Kai Markana, the immortal. Yeah, the Urin spy. And now we slipped into Gosa. Somebody's hijacked train number three. Deploy emergency response. So emergency response is not good. We're going to be thrown into some battles, so this is just going to be great, because it's just Kaim and Sarah, so that's really great. So the, the emergency response is basically sending out something to attack us, to get probably to get the train to stop, I would assume, or something, I don't know, but they're going to hop on board. And we don't have time for this, so let's go and take let's them out. It. So you do have just Kaim and Sarah for this battle, but not to worry, the game didn't pull a total dick move on us, and it's not going to be the most difficult thing in the world. So as we can see, we have two strikers and two land walkers. They all have the same amount of HP, and it really doesn't matter what you want to use. But the land walkers will have an attack called Sleep Shot, which will put you to sleep. So it's up to you whether you want to take up both land walkers first, just so that you don't fall asleep, or if you just want to do it in whatever order you feel like. I'm just going to do it in whatever order I feel like, because I'm not really in any kind of danger anyways. You should be able to take them out in two turns. Even on, even if you are a normal level with both of your immortals, this battle isn't difficult at all. Especially if Sarah's using higher level magic. Grounda, Winda, Aqua, etc. So that's like the first part of it that's done, because unfortunately they, they wouldn't make things you know, that easy for us. And so they're gonna send more stuff our way. Now this boss battle is a little bit different because we can't reach that far. So you cannot attack with physical attacks. So magic is the only way that you're going to get close to any of these creatures. So you have to use magic. So if Kaim doesn't have magic on him, just go through your accessories and equip something that will give him even level white magic, or level one magic, just anything that's gonna help. And then you have this thing called magic energy release, so you don't have to worry about running out of MP. It'll give MP to everybody, including the enemies, so don't worry too much. I'm gonna bring Kaim back just to make this battle speed along a little bit quicker. I don't want to be stuck here all day. And they're very weak, so not to worry. I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to speed the rest of this battle up. There's, there's nothing to it. You know, the only thing to be wary of is that you cannot go ahead and attack physically. You have to use magic attacks. And you pretty much have a never-ending fountain of MP, so don't even worry about it. There's pretty much no danger in this battle. It's very easy battle. It's just, it's more of a nuisance than anything else. They kind of just do it as part of the storyline where they're, they're trying to stop you from taking their train, but we are way better than they are, so we are, of course, not going to be stopped by simple machines. So we, we've just got the one 
creature left, and we should be done with this battle. There we go. Now, unfortunately, even more unfort unfortunately, they give us an actual boss <laughs> to fight, which is stupid, you know. They, they throw these two things our way just as a kind of a warm-up, and then they throw this actual kind of boss at us. This train is a big pain in the ass if you're at a regular level, and it can be very difficult. I'm gonna try to attack first. This train has a very just irritating ability that will nullify all physical attack. So I'm gonna try to attack it first before it puts up a barrier because Kaim does a lot of damage to this train. It'll use the, the protection there and it will put up a physical damage wall so that you can't attack it for I think three turns. So you're stuck with magic for a few turns. Which is kind of annoying. It makes the boss battle a little bit slower because physical attacks are the way to go here. I also put a ring on Kaim that does damage to mechanical enemies, so that's why he did over 2,000 damage, which is more than he should have done, so that's something I can recommend if you feel like doing it just for this part, because all of these machines that we fought in this video are all mechanical. It's gonna take you a few turns, and it's gonna fire some pretty powerful attacks at you, so yeah, in in regular game, like if, if they were at a regular level, this is kind of one of the more annoying bosses because it's just you and Sarah. But the physical wall will go down in a few turns, and I should be able to just wipe him out in one attack with Kaim here, since he's got the additional damage. There we go. Thank god. So now we've gotten rid of all three of the obstacles that were in our way. That took too much time. Let's move. And we can keep on Let's moving go. without any distractions, so that's nice. And that's it for Kaim and Sarah for a while. We're back to this team. And they're still talking politics, so. Piracy. Yes. Our local waters have been ravaged by pirates, taking advantage of our recent military weakness following the catastrophe at the Highlands. So I dispatched our remaining forces to mop them up, and communicate far and wide that Ura will not be defeated. If your forces can defeat pirates, they should be sufficient for most any requirement. You are too kind. I am particularly proud that we succeeded in capturing the most feared pirate on the seas. Ah, uh, Sed. We've heard that name somewhere before. Sed? And Seth knows Sed. What is it, Seth? He's alive. My son. Seth has a son. Huh? And Seth he's also a pirate, me? naturally. Say anything about this Takes one. after his mama. You don't have to tell me twice. Now, I am aware that you've selected Kent as the site for the handover of Grand Staff information. I wonder, though, about the security detail. Will they be sufficient? I would gladly dispatch Ulrin forces to take part as well. Their morale is much higher following their successes against the pirates. I am certain their presence would be helpful. Your concern is appreciated, Your Majesty. The forces so they're still talking about the same boring crap. ...from Goetz's main battle force, the pride of our military. No unwanted visitors will even get close to Kent. May I rest assured that the information will be in good hands once it has been delivered? And they're kind of leaving Ming out of this conversation. Like, they're not even looking at her. We're kind of just like, uh... Like, what is the point of us being here again? And she doesn't even understand, you know, because... I don't think She's not even being included. Come on, guys. Don't be jerks. Yes, forgive me. We are speaking of the construction of a and they're not even staff. listening to us. A second grand staff. Now that is a freaking genius idea. We immortals ask that grand God. staff be destroyed. Kaim told us that the purpose of this meeting was to avert war. All of these figureheads are all very thick-headed. King Tolton and I have come to an agreement. Thanks to your majesty's own words. We thank Kaim for introducing you to us. 
So basically what they're saying is that they're not going to go to war if each city can have their own grand staff because then they will be an equal power and one city will not feel less overpowered than the other one and they have no reason to fight. So uh, that's, that, that is their rationale, but that frankly, even in my mind, really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's very unnecessary. This alliance springs from my love for my people and my efforts to protect them. I trust you will appreciate the significance. This is hypocrisy. We both know what Kaim and Sarah would think if they were to hear you speak this way. I am aware of the contradiction. Regardless, if it would prevent war and bloodshed, I will choose this path and the equivocation that accompanies it. Wait a minute, you're not getting it. This isn't what we But were either way, about. they're gonna lose. I mean we told you there's really not a whole lot they can do we about it. They're either gonna go to war or be completely thinking? obliterated by Gongora. So that is just fantastic Gongora. for this whole world. It's all being destroyed. That is a big ship. It's just about time. Yeah. Hey, here they come. And so Aura, Ura and Gota are going to be meeting up to give those blueprints that Gungora said to give to <laughs> Gota to make it look like they were gonna form an alliance. Yeah, that's what's happening. So now this is back in Aura, just because the game feels like bringing us another location. And here we have a mighty floating gob of machinery floating through Aura. That would freak me out if there was just like a random piece of machinery flying through the air in my city with like lightning clouds of magic energy that is just the most uncomforting feeling ever and as you can see it is another grand staff or just another magic staff really i don't know if it if it's the grand staff but aura has their own staff now presumably for gongora to use at his will so Yep, Gongora is always just going to be two steps ahead of us, which is the most piss-off thing ever. <laughs> very, very annoying. And now that we're in Aura, we actually get to control Gongora, which sucks. I wish we didn't have to control him. We're going to do that in the next video, though, so thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all later.